hey welcome back to see how the boat performed off grid dave and i planned a trip to kaneohe bay but first we had a handful of projects to cross off the list first step on our to-do list this week was servicing the engine we changed the fuel filter oil filter and the impeller Back in my favorite place, the engine room, uh, we are programming our Valmar MC614 voltage regulator for the alternator to charge our lithium house bank. Um, I made, like, I took some notes. I watched a handful of videos and read the manual, I took some notes. So I'm gonna try and reprogram it. So it's my scrap, scrap paper. Touch magnet to red dot. Hold and release when you get to desired value. The desired value I'm looking for is BA for battery type. I'm gonna release, I'm gonna put it back on when I get there. And then I'm gonna scroll to life po. Crawl in this room. We're just running the engine for a little bit. Oh gosh. Because we uh, did an oil change, uh, replaced the fuel filter and the oil filter. So, yeah, engine was running pretty cherry. Anyway, here's the Balmar voltage regulator. This is where it begins. Balmar 614. I think that means factory program. Okay, so now it's gonna scroll through. FDC is flooded deep cycle, so they used to be. Gel. Naturally, our voltage regulator did not have a LifePo preset. So I went into the advanced programming and set a specific charge profile for our house bank, only to find out that our alternator actually wasn't putting out any charge. <laughs> so we're going to try to get that rebuilt before we try to look for a new one. All right. Well, fast forward like two weeks from that last video uh, from Connie Ohe Bay. Um, we actually did not get that alternator rebuilt. We brought it to a shop um, and they pretty much informed us it was kind of super old and yeah, we, we gave it to them for like a week and then we kind of decided let's just upgrade the whole pulley system so we can get more power um, out of our engine and charge up our batteries quicker. So Dave purchased um, 170 amp um, alternator with a whole new Balmar brain. So don't have to worry about any, you know, old equipment anymore. Um, yeah, kind of the story of my life with this boat. All right, resuming. Today the projects are installing the new hot water heater and um, installing some solar panels. We installed four 200 watt solar panels in parallel. We have two on the stern arch and two on our stern rails. So we've got MC4 connectors. We've got females and males. Males, little ones, and then females, big ones. We're on our panels right now, but we have a male. The negative is a, it's a female, so I'm gonna make this negative a male. So to do that, I've got these special crimpers that make a really satisfying noise. You don't want to twist these wires when you strip them. You want to keep them straight. Crimp it. You'll actually see the crimp kind of like grasps those strands slide on this like gasket because these are waterproof and then when you click them together you want to hear a click yep see like i don't i think it went in but i don't hear a click oh there we go make it nice and tight this one's ready to go installed our new solar panels um they're not totally finished, but we have to clean all that wiring up a little bit. And we need to get brackets. <laughs> what? What? Dave installed a new hot water heater. 
from the, basically the same kind, but like a finished material. We reinstalled our old alternator and anchored out in Waikiki to watch the fireworks for New Year's Eve. Conditions early January are typically super nice, so we headed up to Kaneohe Bay for the week. So off your new pole. <laughs> we got stubby right there. <laughs> Today is January 4th. We are supposed to have some light south winds fill in later today. Um, right now it's still trades, light trades. Only got about 10 knots. Um, we're heading to Kaneohe Bay. This is such a different experience than our last. <laughs> attempt um, to go to Kaneohe Bay. Actually, our, our last attempt to circumnavigate Oahu, our first stop was going to be Kaneohe Bay, and it was chaos. Um, the trades had just come back after like a long spell of no wind, and at the head of the trades, it was just like really, really steep, choppy waves, uncomfortable. Pretty seasick. I have not emptied the chamber yet. Debating on whether or not we should continue on this journey <laughs> because it's just so uncomfortable and unwell. But I feel totally helpless. Porter is uncomfortable. Dave's pissed. <laughs> We're just like just not having a good time. It's fine. It's fine right now. It's so uncomfortable. Did I say that it's uncomfortable already? <laughs> the first couple weeks of January are always kind of perfect. Um, there's always super weird winds, but it's like pristine out. So I'm really excited to finally have the opportunity to like really cherish these last moments um, here on the island. So engine's running amazing after our full service. It's having a hundred horsepower diesel working. It's great. <laughs> yeah, we already, I mean, we're just kind of plowing through this, there's really nothing out here, but if we were on Bria Mia, the boat would just be slowing down from getting stopped by all these bumps. It's only 25 horsepower and 10,000 10, 10, pounds. 10,000 pounds, yeah. So, um, <laughs> yeah, this is great. We're just trucking along like 5.3 right now. I guess we slow it down. Waiting for the south wind to clock, clock in. Usually, it will happen when the land heats up. What we're gonna wait on fixing is our autopilot. So we have a ComNav autopilot. The rest of our electronics are Raymarine. I don't know why they chose ComNav. Um, I've heard it's really good, but basically control head is fried and then we have a control head by the pilot house helm every time we would have to use the, the autopilot um we'd have to go inside and like you know put it on standby and i don't know if you've used it before you you know that sometimes you have to like really quickly press standby and you know take control of the helm so it's been kind of problematic not having an autopilot at the helm um or just like nearby i don't think they there's a way to integrate the ComNav autopilot with our Raymarine chart plotter. Um, and so the reason why I'm going to wait on fixing this uh, control head is because a new one is like $1,400 and just for the control head, which is bizarre and kind of difficult to find. Like I had to contact the manufacturer and like say, I can't find a distributor. Can I please buy one from you? Um, but a new Raymarine autopilot, like the complete system is about that much, maybe a little bit more. But it's like, I, I kind of want to decide if I like the ComNav first and maybe to wait if something breaks because that's kind of like the story of my life with this boat. So um, yeah, we're going to wait on fixing this autopilot, see if we like it, see if anything breaks. If we don't like it or if something breaks, then that will um, just make the decision for us and we just kind of get the Raymarine autopilot to integrate it into the sea talking backbone.
goes from about 400 to 40 feet once you get between these two land masses. So the waves kind of build a little bit once you get inside. It's a little squirrely, but it's not as bad as last time. We are passing by the wave energy buoy. Um, not sure exactly how it works, but I think something gets pushed up and down with the ocean swell uh, and creates energy. And then there's a submarine cable that goes all the way from there, somewhere over there, the military base. Um, but yeah, almost to the Sampan Channel should be deep enough I'm not too worried um, and the wind is just going behind us there's really not enough to sail so we're still motoring probably just motor the rest of it there's not much to go but we're almost there all right we're going in the sampan channel um, not much to worry about until we get to the end where it's going to be like six, seven ish feet. Christy's going to drive in and she's, uh, her heart rate is going up. Second buoy is right there. You can barely see it. And then the rest are green. Uh, so you just have to see the right of those. This drop, surprisingly, is actually the same as Brambia. It's 5'6", 5'7", something like that. So we did four. Should be able to do it again. Kinda scary. <laughs> Stop. From like 35, 40 feet to probably about 10 or less. We anchored on the western end of Kaneohe Sandbar and called it a day as soon as the sun set. Join us next week as we explore more of the bay.